welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, I shall see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Hollow today, where it's actually the weekend, not like yesterday where I said it was a weekend and went, then went, wait a minute, it's not the weekend. Um, yeah, we're, we're chilling, it's a weekend, what am I going to do? Uh, I don't have any plans uh, for this weekend. Um, so we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm probably going to play some games, I guess. Uh, uh, I saw the Genshin um, update. Uh, a bit of a trailer. Um, it's an interesting thing. Hold on, we'll, we'll get onto this. Hello, everyone. Right now in Fawn Hollow at 6:07 p.m. on Friday, September 27th, 2024. Um, if you aren't aware, right now there's a voice actor strike uh, going on. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a general actor strike, but yeah, you have to forgive me. I'm I'm not in the industry. I'm I'm not like an expert on that sort of thing. So like, oh, I, I definitely I'm, I'm not the most experienced person to say this. I highly recommend you go search out what other people are saying about it if you want a much more um, well thought out sort of view um but i mean i'm, I'm in favor of a strike you know voice actors and the, the tldr voice actors uh they're on strike and um i think the main protestation that they have is the fact that they uh, the usage of their voices in ai work without being either credited or compensated for it which i'm just like yeah um get that money <laughs> get get that get that permission like that, 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 that to, to me, I, I mean, obviously AI is a very, I'm not going to go that deep into it, AI is a very sort of like new emergent, I don't even know how to describe it, form, um, medium, um, which means that obviously it's like completely unregulated at the moment, that sort of thing, but you know, I'm in full, if you want my, if you want my perspective, full, I'm on full support of a voice actor's go strike, go, go make sure that you can, your voice, your, your craft and your work can be protected, um, so yeah, that, that's a TLDR. So a lot of voice actors are not, um, whenever these strikes happen, is they don't participate in um, uh, company work, which is not like a unionized one or something. And uh, one of the caveats of that is Mihoyo, the people who, or Hoyoverse, uh, who do Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, etc, etc, the games I play, or some of the games I play, um, they're, I believe, the voice acting company that they are, like, work with, are not like covered by the, the union things or whatever so um the voice actors are on strike and obviously not doing any of the work fair enough nah, as i say um so it has led to some things where like where the, there's still promotional trailers and teasers and things um but there's no voice acting there's no english voice acting and they'll release it with like the japanese voice acting because the japanese voice actors are not on strike um and uh interestingly uh each patch update it's very typical at least for these sort of big gacha games um, most gacha games actually i think do it now if we follow this formula to have like um a little like presentation like um a week or so before the patch drops uh, to be like here's what you can expect here's what's coming up and in the past uh, the genshin and all of them they've done like these actual voice actors um themselves or play the characters or they'll play as the voice actors themselves and like talk about what's coming up um is it scripted? Absolutely, it's hundred percent scripted. Probably with like some variations here and there, and it's not meant to be like an improv thing or whatever. I, I don't look at it and be like, wow, these characters are, you know, this is like a true critique on whatever the game or what is coming up. Because why why would you expect that? Um, leave that to like content creators without affiliation, I suppose. With it. Um, and anyway, that's not the point. Uh, the point is to see what's up and coming. Um, but today was basically one they have it for Genshin Impact, but uh, they're still on strike. Um, so uh, I was like, you know, and uh, me and many other people in the community were like, what are they going to do? <laughs> um, because they've clearly not recorded the material. Like, are they just going to release the Japanese one and see what happens? And just put like subtitles on it. But what they actually did is they had the localization team who obviously aren't striking because they're not voice actors. Um, they had the localization team just come on and basically read out the things. And I was like, oh, this is actually slightly, you know, amusingly, in not amusing is the wrong word, but, you know, kind of endearing in a way. Because <laughs> these are people who are obviously not necessarily wanting to be on camera, not part of a, a team who's like trained their entire life to have this whole whole honed craft voice acting so obviously it does sound stiff obviously it sounds like a reading off a script but i'm just like oh you know i don't know there's something very endearing about it all the same anyway um that's all i was gonna say um shalonen's coming in the next patch maybe i'll get super lucky and be able to get a c2 um like i got a kenichi c2 just really randomly but uh that's not how well i mean it's not necessarily how luck works but you know 
Uh, it was an interesting thing that I was reflecting on with Genshin is that I find myself not wanting to pull as many different characters now. Um, I, I, it was a thing I said to my friend ages ago, but like I'd always rather have a character than pull for a constellation. And now uh, it seems like I'm going back on that because there's like, the thing is, there's not that high a demand for characters in Genshin. Diving into the game design point here, uh, the late game content, you know, all exploration content you can do with four characters basically. Um, and then there's like two end game modes, Spiral Abyss, which you only need eight characters for basically, um, and with some variations here and there. And there's uh, Imaginarium Theatre, which you technically need like 24 or something, but I have like way more than 24 build characters. Um, I have like an absurd amount of build characters because I play my characters very wide rather than um, narrow, right? Or tall, as I think it goes. Um, so there's like less and less like want for me to really pull for upcoming characters. Not upcoming characters, but characters which I don't necessarily need. And now it's sort of like my head's starting to turn to be like, oh yeah, now I want, uh, you know, recently it's been like, oh, I want to get like the character weapons and that sort of thing. And now my head's turning again, being like, oh, maybe I should start getting constellations for characters I would like actually play all the time and it would actually meaningfully change the way they play. I'm just like, oh no, is this what I wanted to do? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm thinking about it. Like, would I rather have C1, like Xianyun, or would I rather have, like, um, like Ayato or something? And the answer is, I probably would rather have C1 Xianyun, you know? But this, this conversation makes no sense if you don't play Genshin Impact. Would you rather have an extra copy, like, like a 5% more powerful character that you play all the time? Or would you rather have a character that you have no interest in? And, you know, if you asked me ages ago, I would have been like, I'd rather have a character I have no interest in. But I think about it now, and I'm just like, I have so many characters which just sit on the bench and I basically never use them. Like, when's the last time I used Ayaka? Like, hardly ever. <laughs> when's the last time I used, I don't know, like, Yay? Despite her being one of my favorite characters, it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just haven't, I've barely used her. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. That's why I'm, start I'm starting to be like, oh, maybe I'm starting to turn to more, more to weapons, more to constellations. And now Shalona and Inchurio are coming in the next patch. And I'm just like, okay, well, there's some characters with some pretty, like, nifty con uh, constellations. C1 Churi makes a very usable um, with Navia teams. Shalona in Seas 2 is insane. Obviously, I don't have enough Prima Gems. I also get very lucky uh, to pull for those constellations, but you never know. All of those constellations. I, I should have enough for Shalona and I think probably her weapon as well. Um, I would have to get lucky, I think, for a constellation. I don't even know which constellation I'd prefer. C1, Shalona or Chiori. Like, I, I don't know. But this is where my mind's at now. I'm just, I'm just like, these are now transformative ways to play with other characters. Or something like, would I rather save up for like C2 Shalona or would I rather pull the future characters? I don't know. It's crazy, huh? Like Raiden, that's another good example. When's the last time I used Raiden? And the answer is, I can't even remember the last time I used Raiden. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's a, this interesting sort of thing that once you've, like, it's interesting, I suppose, because this is not a very common thing for, how else do I describe it except for solving a live game? And you might be like, okay, let's break this down. What do I mean by that? So there are like, before the sort of like, the big trend i suppose of like these ongoing games as a service model sort of things with frequent updates um and i'm talking about the sort of like gacha ones which are much more like single player like frequent update ones um that there's most of the games were either like single player you play by yourself or like multiplayer or like you play locally or whatever some campaign etc etc or you play multiplayer and it has like an ongoing sort of thing like with single player games you know if it's an offline game unless it gets frequent frequent patch updates will often get to a point of being not solved, but like highly optimized, right? I mean, no great examples and things like Super Mario 64 or something, you know, like people speed run the heck out of the game. They're still discovering new things all the time, of course, but like it's a highly, highly optimized game at this point. Um, people, I'm not saying that there are not better ways to do things. I'm not saying that people are not discovering new things, but people have a general good idea of like a lot of the intrinsic mechanics in their game and exploits that they can use to like speed run the game. Um, and in fact, like, and even just beat the game in general, to be honest. Um, which is what I'm trying to say when like a game becomes sort of like solved in a sense, but there's no, um, for the average person, there's not much more to garner from it. Like that's why like 
people play through Super Mario 64, they get like 120 stars. Once you do that, it's like done. The average person probably isn't even going to get 120 stars. They're probably going to get to like 32 or 16 or whatever, then like call it quits. That's my guess. Um, but speedrunners, I suppose, have gotten more mileage out of the game by having this new sort of um, unending task of constantly bringing down the time to accomplish X goal, making it sort of become like a live service game in a sense, where it's like, okay, now you have this like endless mode thing which you can discover, except for you have like finite updates in the game, right? Except for not finite updates because there, there can always be more exploits to discover, there's just not like an actual company heading the updates. But then you also have like these live service games like League of Legends, Dota, um, Valorant, um, CSGO, etc, etc, where there are like balance updates are coming, but the gameplay is out of a multiplayer aspect of it. Um, and the optimization of that things. And these sort of games like don't really become solved, intentionally so. The meta is always meant to be shifting in these games because um, that's what keeps it engaging. It's like almost new content. I mean, not to say that these games don't get new content, they do get new content, but like a meta shift feels like new content in a life service game, right? Um, that's what I mean by like those games can't really be solved as much. But it's interesting in these sort of like gacha-esque games, which fall as a weird in-between the two, where they're like, at least in like Engine Impact's case, it's a single player game basically. Okay, there's co-op modes, but there's no late game co-op. Like, the co-op is for fun. It's a social aspect rather than like an actual intrinsic mechanic in the game. Um, but it has a life service aspect of it, which means that it is a game which is expected to, uh, which has the sort of continuity of these other live service games which don't get sold because the meta can often shift. And the meta can shift in these sort of games, but like there becomes a point at least in Genshin Impact's case, mainly because there's not enough like late game mode, um, where it becomes sort of like what I mean by that, I suppose, in Genshin terms, like you can have a certain as like trio of characters and you probably wouldn't need to pull for any other characters anymore. You about would probably be all you needed to be the game. Heck, you might like, I, d I don't know if it's still possible, but you know, some people are crazy enough out there to basically just like beat the end game content with like some of the starting characters still. What I'm trying to say is, because of Genshin's inherent design, I suppose, as a sort of gacha game and um, discouragement from, like, there's no, like, competitive multiplayer aspect of it, um, that these, there is, becomes a point where your account sort of caps out, I suppose, in the, in the in-game mechanics se sense, where you can't, it's not that you don't get stronger, you just get more versatile, I suppose, is the word, but that doesn't necessarily translate across to strength of your account as directly as getting like a, a big upgrade character or something, you know? And that's an interesting, like, I, I literally just like came up with this off the top of my head. But I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to put these internal th thoughts into words because it's an interesting thing to analyze here. Because of a lack of inherent competitive mode, I, I guess what, I, perhaps a better way to phrase it is not that there is no end game or in Genshin necessarily, or that there is not a way that they couldn't support about this sort of like game model this like gacha live single player um esque game could not have a way to have like infinite world possibilities it's just more like having a multiplayer competitive aspect it gives like immediate access to hey this is like a way that the meta can constantly shift about that sort of thing this is a way that people can continuously be engaged by interacting with this um the only other way it works on genshin is that they had to just increase the difficulty i suppose of Spiral Abyss, or they should introduce more modes, but they just haven't really. Um, because then it means, how do I put this? There is like a well of possibility of intrigue, which can sort of go into analyzing it, but it gives you more motivation for these characters, which is what we tried to do with Im Im Imaginary and Theatre, but it's also the thing about like, I played this game for almost four years now. Um, oh, three years probably. Um, I have a wealth of characters, they, they, they would need like an, a double Imaginarium theatre or something for me to even like touch half, like even use half a characters I even <laughs> have at this point. Um, which I kind of do because they got like half the elements or something, but even then it's like, is that enough? I don't know. I guess also because Imaginarium theatre is actually quite easy. <laughs> but the difficulty for it's not that high, like optional difficulty is only for bragging rights really, so. One interesting concept, this concept of yeah. And it doesn't really matter much for these like offline single player games which have like a defined end because they have a defined end. Like you're not meant to necessarily evolve 
um, any more from it like this meta or like continuously play it they're just like once that experience is done it's up to you if you want to continue playing it or not and you make your own fun hence speedrunners like find these optimizations maybe like secret easter egg hunters will like dive into like trying to find all these nooks and crannies and exploits and maybe like law uh, discussers will take it outside of a game and, and do that these things still all apply apply to all the other games except for um i guess for the offline game it has like this defined game point uh, point in the game where the de developers themselves are just like hey now it's up to you but these live game ones it's sort of like it continues onwards right I don't know how to properly phrase this. I'm not sure if I'm coming across properly. But the, the, the TLDR is basically sort of just like, there is like a upper limit, I suppose, of Genshin, for example, of how strong your account really needs to be, quote, quote, subjectively, by ranking against the, quote, quote, end game content. And this end game content is because it's which doesn't apply to other live service games because they have end game content quote quote of literally being competitive multiplayer which you know what's the end game content of that you climb the ladder which is an endless climb essentially <laughs> but it's not like you have a spiral abyss ladder to climb in genjin impact you just have you beat it and that's it and that that is a certain difficulty level which at a certain point you like way over way over achieve that limit in genjin impact of course this actually doesn't apply to most people mind you because it turns, because not turns out, uh, the most common player of Genshin Impact is actually relatively casual. The most common player can't probably even beat floor like has probably not reached the Spiral Abyss in Genshin Impact. The people who have like thirty six stars Spiral Abyss is like zero point five percent is my guess or something. So really, I, if anything, I should be I should retrace my steps and be like, okay, I'm looking at this from the from perspective of a. Com competitive quote quote Genshin Impact player I'm not even competitive it's just more like I'm optimized I suppose if it had like the equivalent of a rank ladder system I guess I'd be like plat or something or diamond maybe <laughs> um which is an interesting thing to think about because that means that if you are not if you are someone who doesn't optimize who doesn't like care about the meta or doesn't care about like how the in interweaving mechanics plays or whatever then there is like it does I guess feel like that is like the sort of endless end game sort of content for you of like trying to overcome the spiral abyss right that is the equivalent of your like multiplayer competitive matches in league of legends fascinating huh how do you have that balance right then because if you add more and more difficult end game modes things where you can actually miss out on which is the dangerous thing in gacha games is the currency which people are just like buying after so so intensely then you're gonna alienate a huge part of your audience just being like hey you can't get this stuff which is, you know, kind of what they want because then they kind of want you to spend money and then like pull for stronger characters, etc. Take shortcuts essentially for it. Um, but yeah. Um, but is it, I don't know, is it worth developing like a huge amount of content for less than 0.1% of your players? And the answer might be yeah, maybe actually. Because those are the most dedicated players, right? <laughs> it's so hard to say. Now, game, game development on such a large scale like this is very complicated. I don't even know what the best option would be. Anyway, <laughs> another episode of Dear Darling talks about game development despite the fact that she's not an expert in any sense of a word about game development, but here we are. Anyway, I'm going to round this episode off here. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares, greatly appreciated. Social Discord down below. Hope to see each other again, but for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.